Hello! Welcome to our first episode of Teen Talk History Edition. I'm Allison. And I'm Rachel. And today we are going to give you the history of geodesy and how Eratosthenes and Al Biruni have contributed to it. Geodetics, or geodesy, is the scientific study of the mathematical measurements and representation of the Earth, and it became really popular during the Age of Enlightenment. And the idea that the Earth was round didn't originate until around the 5th century in the Pythagorean school. It was backed up by Plato, but his reasoning wasn't really believable. He was kind of like, hey, I like spheres, and obviously God's going to make the Earth a sphere because God likes me. I like spheres. And so, many people didn't really believe Plato because of that. So Aristotle, Plato's disciple, tried to back up his mentor's claims like the good homie he is. He was like, you know, there are stars in the sky in the north that aren't there in the south, so obviously the earth is round. Come on, people. Obviously. Aristotle is credited as the first Greek philosopher to try and find the size of the earth, but it's not really clear how he calculated his findings. However, about after the 5th century, most Greek writers believed that it was round, and here is why. Now, in comes this guy named Eratosthenes, around 240 BC. And this guy was honestly one of the most groundbreaking guys of his time. Not only was he a great mathematician, but he was also a poet, astronomer, music theorist, and eventually was dubbed the father of geography. Go Airy! Already having been summoned to be the chief librarian at the Library of Alexandria in Egypt, Eratosthenes was like, alright, I'm ready to figure out how big the Earth really is. Aristotle had completely guessed that the Earth was about 40,000 stadia, and no one was really kind of sure what stadia he used, so it could have been really inaccurate. He could have almost completely doubled the size of the Earth in his standards. However, Eratosthenes, who was living in Hellenistic Libya at the time, was almost able to exactly calculate the Earth's circumference with basically a well, a pole, and some camels. So, Eratosthenes had heard, he was like, hey, I know that at noon on the summer solstice, which is the day with the most sunlight in the year, that the sun shines directly down a well in Syene, Egypt. He was like, there is absolutely no shadow down this well. It is going straight down into the well. The sun must be directly overhead. So now, Aristosthenes is hanging out in Alexandria, Egypt, sitting around with, with his camels and whatnot. And, and he realized, he was like, hey, the sun doesn't shine perfe perfectly, this is a tongue twister, I got this, perfectly perpendicular to the earth. And instead, the pole in Alexandria casts a shadow on the summer solstice. After he figured this information out, he began formulating this mathematical experiment in which he believed he could find the real size of the Earth. So, the summer solstice rolls around and Aristosthenes is like, I got this, and sets out to measure the angle that the shadow of the sun's rays make. He estimates it to be about 7.2 degrees. Meanwhile, he sends out one of his buddies, he's like, hey, take a few of my camels and go find the distance between Alexandria and Syene. This guy ends up finding that it's about 5,000 stadia, which was the common measurement of the time. With this information, Aristosthenes was like, now I can draw up a diagram that will allow me to find the circumference of the Earth. Thanks a lot, camels. You did good. Now remember, this was in 240 BC. This stuff like, stuff like this is revolutionary at this time. He had a well and a pole and some camels, and he's going to find the circumference of the Earth. Using a geometric law of inverse interior angles, remember that? Remember that from sophomore or freshman year from wherever you are? Yeah, geometry. No. <laughs> you don't remember that? All right. Well, Aristosthenes remembered that. He was able to deduce that the angle that the two poles created at the center of the Earth was also 7.2 degrees. Since he knew that a circle, or the circumference, would be about 360 degrees, he divided the 7.2 section from the 360 to find the amount of 5,000 stadia sections that were in the Earth. This came out to be about 50, multiply that by the 5,000, and you get about 
250,000 stadia. Convert that to kilometers and you get about 46,250 kilometers. This calculation is so insanely close to the real circumference, which is about 40,075 kilometers. So, this guy really knew what he was doing. It's really crazy given the resources he had. Again, a well, a stick, and some camels. After this fighting, Eratosthenes is like, hey, I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna create geography. I'm just gonna up and create geography. Knowing relatively the true measurement of the Earth, I'm gonna create a map that is basically one of the closest correct maps at that time. He was the first guy to be like, I'm gonna break up the world into two sections using an equator, and I'm the first guy that's going to really use the North and South Pole to plan where everything is located on the Earth. He's also the first guy to use a trial of latitude and longitude, even though they were really crude, he still tried and that was pretty awesome. He was dubbed the father of geography, and this was all because he used geodesy to find the circumference of the earth. He created geography! Do you get that? <laughs> he no. created geography! Um, he's like, I created geography! Christopher Columbus had studied Aristosthenes' findings and chose not to believe him, and used a man named Toscolini's inaccurate map. And this is why he thought that he had landed in India when he first came to the New World. Eratosthenes. Remember that name. Eratosthenes. He was awesome. Got it. The end. For Eratosthenes. On to Alberuni. Now, in comes a guy named Alberuni in the year 990. At the age of 17, he calculated the latitude of a city calf using the maximum altitude of the sun. He also solved a complex geodesic equation in order to accurately compute the Earth's circumference. But you're probably wondering what this guy did that was so special, right? I know you are. Well, unlike his predecessors who used the sun's position to measure the Earth's circumference, Al Biruni developed his own trigonometric calculations based on a plane and a mountaintop. Yeah. Hold on to your chairs, people, because we are about to dig a little deeper into just how this dude did what he did. Mm -hmm. First, he calculated the height of the mountain by going to two points at sea level with a known distance apart, and then he measured the angle between the plane and the mountaintop at both points. He then used the following formula to determine the height of the mountain. H equals d tan theta sub 1 times tan theta sub 2 over tan theta sub 2 minus tan theta sub 1. <sighs> what a genius. <laughs> Clearly, dude had too much time on his hands, after all, it was 990, because after that he thought, I'm going to use an astrolabe and apply the values I determined using that equation into another equation, and that equation is going to be h cosine theta over 1 minus cosine theta. Ta-da! Rushed it. Basically, he accurately determined the radius of the Earth by formulating a trigonometric equation relating the dip angle, the angle between the true horizon and the astronomical horizon that was observed from the top of a mountain to the height of that mountain, as one does. Of course, duh. His estimate, 6,399.9 kilometers, was only 16.8 kilometers less than the modern value. This is the first time that a dip angle has ever been used in history. His mathematical findings about the radius in the Earth allowed him to create various map projections. He used his own mathematical equations to develop the most accurate ways to pinpoint locations of cities, by recording the degrees of latitude and longitude line. Biruni ended up writing 95 books about his mathematical findings because clearly the finding of those findings wasn't enough entertainment, and he wrote about how they helped contribute to his vast findings in astronomy. He honestly has been so important to the development of our knowledge of the Earth and the accuracy of maps that he now has a university named after him in Afghanistan, which just shows that he made it. He has been dubbed the father of geodesy. The father of geodesy. So obviously as time goes on, we have been able to find more accurate and deeper information about the measurements of the Earth because of the tools and resources we have available to us now. But both Aristosthenes and Al Biruni have been revolutionary to our findings of the Earth and how we figure out the math of the Earth. They've changed everything. They've changed maps. They've changed astronomy for us. They've changed the Earth for us. 
Thanks, Alberuni and Eratosthenes. You did this like 20 centuries okay, ago. Mom. Bye, Rachel. Thank you for watching Teen Talk History Edition. We will see you next time. I've been Allison. There goes Rachel. It didn't turn off. Okay. Bye. <laughs> it was only two minutes. Cool. Okay.